Texas and say, right, I want to add some videos. So you go and browse to where you have them stored. So in this case, I've got an external hard drive down here. You might have a network drive, such as that, or you can have UMPP devices, or even a Windows share, which, it, which I think it's what most people would have if you say you've got a drove or a Synology box. So you go up there and go into the drive and say, right, there I am. I'm going to say okay to that. And then you say okay. And then you select what type of content it is. And this is where some of the magic happens. Because you can tell it's, that it's all movies or you tell it it's TV shows. It then knows certain databases on the internet to consult and to compare all the file names of the videos that you have, and it will generate for you a very nice looking library. So here's my movie database. You've got all great pictures, and then you can even go in and you can view information about the movie, a little bit of a synopsis, you can see how long it's going to run for, and whether it's suitable for your kids, and you can even play a trailer, which doesn't always work, but we'll see. Yeah, depending on the internet, this is where you get demoed, Bill, so here we go. that works. So the next thing, um, if you don't want to just watch what you've got stored, say if you don't have a lot of media at home, you might want to stream a few things, so you need to add some plugins. So to do that, we go over to the system menu, settings, down to add-ons, wrong place, get add-ons and then XBMC has got a repository of add-ons and you can actually add custom repositories with a huge array of plugins and sources of videos. So you can go in there and then you have all these different categories of plugins. And then just, uh, let's see, go for video add-ons because they're the most fun ones. Um, Apple iTunes trailers. So you just click on it, install, boom, there you go. It's ready to go. And I have a few plugins that I prepared earlier. So you can watch BBC iPlayer. That isn't in the repository, so you need to go out on the internet and get, it, get that as a zip file. But you can log into your YouTube account. Um, and actually, sh should I risk showing you all what YouTube thinks? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I think we'll avoid that. <laughs> but you can see, I can go into my subscriptions where all the, all the tech news videos that I watch. So there's what I there's all the things I need to get through and watch. It takes such a hard life. <laughs> You'll notice navigating through it's, but it kind of feels like a file system. You're going up to the old double dot menu. Um, symbol which isn't great but you, on most controllers you do have a back button so that's fine um, other things you might want to add one and sorry other things you might want to add on are to make it look and feel differently so you might want to get different skins say if like you really want an apple tv system but you can't really afford it so you want to just make it look like it um, <laughs> Go into appearance and select a skin. Now I've got a few skins that I installed earlier on. You do that just the same way that you get and install other other plugins. So here we go. So for those who like Sony TVs, we got this one. How do I put it back? There we go. So there's another skin. You see that's completely transformed it, and some skins actually require different plugins to give you added functionality. So then the trick is, is working out how all the, all the new menus are worked out so you can get back and change your skin back again. <laughs> there we go, here's the Apple TV style. So who can tell the difference? 
Um, oh yes, and I was saying um, you can have music, so here's some of my music collection, and yes. Sir. That was embarrassing. <laughs> so yes, I am going to play gangland stuff. <laughs> There you go, so you can have a party with us. Um, right, so I'm going to go back to the original skin because I will, have, I will lose my bearings otherwise. There we go, confidence, that's the classic skin. Now, you've, been, you've seen me doing magic on here, wondering how the heck I'm doing it. Well, there are lots of ways you can control this. Um, I'm using an infrared remote control. This is just a standard programmable TV remote. And the way I'm making that work with my laptop is with this little dongle. This is called FLIRC, which stands for Free Libre Infrared Remote Control. Um, it basically simulates a USB keyboard, and you can program certain key presses to be triggered when you put an IR signal into it. There's a free app you can download and install. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start passing stuff out for you to just to have a look at. So I will pass these around, and then I and these are all parts of my home entertainment system. So I really do need them back. <laughs> um, other things you can use um, little keyboard here, so you can actually actually mouse around. This isn't designed to be used with a mouse, but it does have a case of support in it. So that's another thing you could use. Um, and there's other sort of little keyboards. Thank you, Simon, for lending this. It's a little keyboard with a touchpad. There we go. Um, now, I was saying earlier on that you can install XBMC on anything. Well, this thing. This actually started life as a Kickstarter project, and it's called the Ouya. And it's actually an Android based games console. But this, this is actually my TV set top box. Everything I watch in my living room goes through this. I've got XBMC installed on it, and I've actually, the infrared dongle that's going around, I actually have plugged in the back of here. And then my IR control just reflects off the back of my Chrome TV stand and controls it. But there is a Bluetooth controller that comes with it as well, which has got a little touchpad so you can mouse around as well. So unfortunately, you can't see this running. We haven't got time to play games. But. There you go. Now, the other, if you want to get really clever, the other thing you can do is install a remote control app on your phone. So I'm going to show you my phone screen now. So there I've got a couple, a couple of widgets, which you can only do on Android, sorry, iPhone guys. Um, so I can just like swipe my screen aside and control my TV. So you can kind of see where TV lies in my priorities in life. <laughs> if I open the app, <laughs> turn it sideways now. So you can swipe in from the side and you can actually browse your whole media library on your phone. And most remote, most XBMC remote apps work in this way. The one I'm using here is called Yatsi, which is a very good one. It allows you to do a little trick like this. Play 300. There we go. Maybe it's playing down here. And, and actually with this app, you can even stream the videos from your, ex, your media center to the phone as well. So you can, if you like doing home networking or you want a reason to start doing home networking, this is a good excuse because it's a good bit of fun when it all works together. Now, and that brings in another thing is that this is actually a good reason to, Stop that. Copyright reasons and all. Um, it's if you want to do this, it actually might be a good time to get a network drive because you can use a network drive to keep a backup of all your personal files. 
and you can have multiple XDMC installs around the house. So one, one in every bedroom, one in the living room, kitchen if you're feeling adventurous. Actually, the bathroom is a really good place to have XDMC. I've done it. I've had a tablet running XBMC and sat back and watched the movie. Well, never mind. Um, but if you've got a network drive, all your media is stored in one place. So you can just point all your installs at the same place. So uh, let's see. Talking of home networking, there is another very cool trick you can do. And this is kind of more power user territory. You can configure. XBMC to, rather than building its own library as a local file, you can tell it to look to a database server on your home network. And then in that case, you get two things. You get a central database so that if one device messes up, you don't lose your library, you don't have to recompile it all over again. It doesn't have to go on the internet looking for everything. Um, and also, if you're watching a TV series, and you, it marks up all the episodes you've watched. That is synchronized across all your devices. Thank you. And also, it'll remember where you are in the middle of a video file, for example. So you can be sat in the living room watching a film, pause it, go upstairs, select the phone again in your bedroom, and it says, do you want to pick up where you left off? And I'll say, that's just please, that'll be good. Um, I'll just show you some pictures of that. So I'm going to have to do it with my keyboard, because you've all got my controllers. Um, pictures. So this is XBMC in my house. So there's my there's my bedroom setup. The power cable at the side is carrying Ethernet and power to everything, and I've got a Raspberry Pi on the back of that TV. That's a <coughs> member's docking station for my Windows tablet. So then you have this rat's nest underneath. So it's the main thing you hide all the wires. Um, but at least you do if you like me or John. Yeah. So there's there's the Raspberry Pi behind my TV. Uh, um, there's my spare room and there's my database server. And this is this is my living room. So there's the Ouya console that you've all got somewhere. Um, and then underneath that is a, what's called a Drobo. Um, that's a network drive. It's got four drives in it with redundant storage. Very handy very characteristic as well, it's getting, it's getting on a bit. Um, but then behind, again, quite obsessive about cables up, hidden everything away like that. That box. Um, oh yeah, and that's the back of my area. So you can see the Fleck dongle that you've probably seen at some point. That's where it all hides away, so there's nothing sticking out. I can just use the TV remote. And you could do that with, oh, I don't, sorry, I don't know how that got there. That's maybe a Google Plus. <laughs> Never mind. That's, I'm not trying to show off or anything. Um, yeah, so that's what you can do with XBMC. It will, oh, I should also mention, I don't use this side of it, but it can, if you've got a computer with a PBR software and TV tuner, this can be a client for those servers. I just decided to completely cut, cut cords and I'm not using Sky, I'm not using Freeview, I'm using just IP streaming through, through this, so I, I don't use that. Um, so I think that pretty, pretty much covers everything. That is, so if you've got any spare hardware, you can, and, and really old TV, put them together, and you get a fantastic system. And it's all, thank you, and it's all free. XBMC is open source. So it's all, it's all, it's all for free. Thank you very much indeed, David. Um, I couldn't agree more with hiding wires. I don't, um, for those of you who know me, I don't like wires. Neatness is paramount in my life. Um, any questions? Anybody using this as well? So I know Simon does. Uh, I don't know any of you guys do. So how many have you got? Six, seven? Hey, Ross. There's a few people. I don't know. Yeah, and so this is Simon. Simon's brought this in. This is a Raspberry Pi XPMC Media Center. So that's, you can have it as small as that. Dave, I, I started messing around with the Raspberry Pi one after Simon caught me into it back at Christmas time, and uh, it crashes all the time. Is that normal? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I maybe have to do a reboot a month.
Right. Because they don't get any crashes. Yeah. And yeah. I've got mine overclocked to 900 megs as well, and I still don't get any crashes. Oh, so it's right. Well, we can just. Yeah. yeah. But you need to check which of the two operating systems there's Raspbian and, and OpenOLEC, and I think. The evaluation I did was from with the open right. I mean, it's I, went with, yeah. I went with the other, I went with Raspi MC. Okay. These are Linux distributions for the Raspberry Pi. There's also XBM as well. Oh, yes. I had, yes. Is it? Yeah. I, I had forgotten about that. <laughs> okay, I had a Plex Pardon? Plex. I have, yeah, I tried switching over to Plex. And um, for everyone else's benefit, Plex is also actually built on top of the XBMC code. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually wanted to switch to it because that delightful um, that delightful laptop there, I actually wanted to set up as a renderer for Plex. However, I found that it's the, the way it scraped TV episode data was not as effective as just pure XBMC was. Well, the reason I say this is I've got um, an LG TV and the client that we know is just is the best client. Yes. It's on a TV, so it's just Hence the reason why that's straight away Yeah, if that works for you, it'd be a lot more convenient. And like I say, I mean, I wanted to switch over to it, but it, it just wasn't scraped. It wasn't identifying TV shows as well for me. Very, very standard. I've run it for about 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. I'm using Plex as well, rather than Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll just say for everyone else, one of the benefits of Plex over. XBMCs, every XBMC install does its own video decoding. Whereas Plex, you'll have a central server in the house that does that and sends out a, sh a video stream to a target device that's mu that is much easier to render. So you can actually stream virally onto your phone from your Plex server. That's cables. Yes. And you can do it over the internet as well. Yeah. So I can look down the phone. Yeah. Yeah. The console is all my phone. If I wanted to get really nerdy, I could do that with XBMC too. If I set up a VPN and I let people in, into my VPN, but it's just, it, but then, um, both ways, you just, you're um, victim to upstream bandwidth. Well, I would argue as well that Flex has got a massive security flaw that hasn't been sorted out yet. And okay. so onto it. You know the URL, you can go and view everybody's content and just uh, pick it over. Yeah, right. Well, I can do because I have all my media on a home server. I can expose my home server content over a secure uh, URL, and I take my uh, my um, uh, Raspberry Pi with me, and I can actually stream the content to my Raspberry Pi from my home server anywhere yeah. in the world. That is also quite cool. Yeah. And I can run that thing off a off a, a, a phone recharger. You know, with a battery pack. I'll get a, a movie's worth out of a, a phone recharge pack. Yeah. This is a this is a, a new world to me. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling deeply embarrassed. I'm, I'm not, not you just really nerdy, though, no, 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 not clever enough. <laughs> well, we all that's where our priorities are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that won't show us all the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who runs? Who has Sky subscription? Just, to, I'm just interested. Why go back? Why free view? Can you run more than one operating system at different times, but yeah. use it? Well, no. Uh, could you use put a different operating system so you have one? You can use one as the media center and another part of it as like the normal Raspberry Pi computer. Oh, um, um, yeah, I think that would be limited on the size of the SD card. And uh, yeah, I'd need to look into how you would dual boot a, ras a Raspberry Pi, but I'm sure in theory it's possible. Well, you, what you could actually do is you could have different operating systems on different yeah. memory cards and just swap the cards out. Yeah, you that's, yeah. You can even kind of run two operating systems at the same time, because that would be madness, that would make my head explode. But, um, <laughs> uh, but you know, you could build a chip, you could buy two Raspberry Pis, two operating systems, dump together. Yeah. Well, isn't, RAS, isn't XBMC just a plug-in to the OS anyway, so you can run the OS like on RASPMC. Yeah. Um, yeah. XBMC. That's the benefit of not using, oh. that's the benefit of not using OpenOLEC, because mm. RASPMC, sorry Zerman, but mm. is, is a full Debian install, yeah. so I can actually terminal into my Raspberry Pi and sort of do Linuxy command line sort of incantations if, when I need to. And that's why I don't run Raspberry. <laughs> Robert, can you translate for me? <laughs> 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 you know, start. 
<laughs> Can I see you after? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, tremendous. It's not half as complicated as you think. Oh, it's as I'm making it. Yeah. No, 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 it, it's just different. It, it's like French, English, and German. They're not languages, they're just slightly different syntaxes. That's a bugger, because I can only speak Italian. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably why. Oh, fantastic. No, it's not, it's not. Any more questions, guys? I'm just conscious, conscious of time. Peter. I, I apologise for missing the first half of the, the talk, but I actually did. Uh, thank you. Um, maybe you've covered this already, but I've got a big library of DVDs. Yes. And they're not on an ebook server. Yeah. You, how do you cope with that? Well, XBMC can handle ISO files, so you. So I would recommend ripping. E either ripping the ISO <coughs> files or actually ripping the individual <coughs> TV episodes out and making them video files. That's, That's going to take a long time. Yeah. So yeah. what? Echo tempo? Yeah. Um, yeah, so rip, yeah, I think just rip ISO files and let XBMC handle those. <coughs> Someone's got the robot that will do that for you. <laughs> yeah, you need a DVD jukebox. Yeah, we're going to pick enough story drives to put it all on there. Yes. Yeah. That's the thing we should say. I mean, this is mainly working off video files, which you can get from a multitude of sources. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well, thank you ever so much. A terrific talk. And thanks all for the great questions as well. <laughs> Up next is Mr. Gooding, who I'm going to introduce you to shortly. We have a very short couple of minutes break, so recharge your, recharge your glass, nip to Lou, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes' time. Any parts to come back to David? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.